Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek and we're going to practice my talk for Open Science Uppsala. And Open Science Uppsala is, as you would expect, the Open Science community in Uppsala. This talk is called Unpublishing the Analysis of Exploratory Research Before Having Seen the Data. And you can see uh, my presentation, you can download it at this URL, it's also in the last slide. It's in the public domain, that means you can just do with my presentation whatever you like without crediting me, because I care more about open science than about me getting credit. So this is a statement sometimes people say to me. They say, although publishing the analysis of research before having seen the data prevents questionable research practices, they will acknowledge that, However, for an exploratory study, one cannot do or specify a useful analysis beforehand. And that is the research question of this talk. Um, why do people do it uh, anyways? What are the reasons given from a simple literature search? Uh, or ha has it ever even been done? So for pre-registration for exploratory data, why do you do it? Why do you think should do it hasn't been done I do need to clarify th these terms so this is a um, this is a picture from this paper in nature and um, it discussed what registered reports are and at the left you have just like classical science uh, depicted in a cartoon at the right we see a pyramid it sees more structured and the pyramid has, has like the bottom layers stage one plan then there's a layer on top of it called review, so that's called the stage one review. Stage two, results. Above that we have a final review, a thin layer. And at the top, being added to the pyramid, we have a published registered report. So a registered report is a published paper that had a pre-registration, that had its plan published and to, 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 to show it in another way like this is the workflow for for having a for publishing a registered report where you first develop your idea you design your study and that gets reviewed and even if you don't have the review if you already pre-registered your study design of your study you have done a pre-registration um, if you get However, pass review, you do it, you write your report, pass stage two review, then you have a registered report. So all registered reports have a pre-registration, but not all pre-registrations end up in a registered report. Or they can end up, for example, uh, like a regular paper and only mention that they pre-registered. The setup of my talk to answer the question, um, do are there pre-registrations or are there registered reports for exploratory studies? And we're going to do a literature search to tell me why I should do that. And then I'm going to look at of examples of exploratory studies that have ended in a registered report. So to search the literature, why I want to publish an exploratory study as a pre-registration, I searched um, Google Scholar. Um, I took the top 10 out and I see if they can answer my question. Can one publish the analysis of exploratory research before having seen the data? And then um, I'm going to write those down, those answers, if there are any. Well, the literature search gave me around 30,000 results. Only one paper had both pre-registration and exploratory in the title. Seven articles, and I'll give you a list in the next two slides. They seem useful to answer the question, why would you do that? Um, and one paper gives no reasons why you would do it, so only six are useful. So this is the list. Um, number one hit, well, th these are just, uh, so, so uh, this is one, two, this is a closed paper, three, this is also a closed paper, another closed paper, uh, a hark no more, and this is the last paper. 
that I use to answer the question why would I pre-register when I have an exploratory study and um, I clumped up the res results and this gets me into uh, to four slides with answers well some studies said that it would make exploratory research more trustworthy useful and it improves the scientific process of discovery there's also a better distinguish between what's confirmation and what's an exploratory analysis like if it's just an exploratory analysis you can say that um, if it's confirmatory you can say that and, and the pre-registration makes it clear that you're doing exploring exploring data that you, that you try to generate hypotheses hypotheses due to the stage one review you have a better study quality and it may also save you resources due to that review but also your analysis it allows you to set a stopping rule it will tell you it will allow you to say I do this and not more and I will use this tools and not more and I can finally say what I'm going to do before I collect my data and write it on paper and get it reviewed and if I do fully plan my analysis before I can get credit for it and it can be part of when you write the paper you can be written down as the person who planned the analysis it's also to reduce questionable research practices so it, uh, it assumes to reduce file drawing which means that if you have a study that has a null finding that means it finds nothing it finds no difference between treatment a and b for example then most people won't publish it and that's a bad idea that gives a bias um, for um, because this will give a bias a publication bias because if there is no effect this is a valid publication and publishing this null finding will prevent older people from doing the same thing because people will keep trying and trying and trying um, although it's known to, to not give a result it reduces p-value hacking so p-value hacking is the process of using multiple statistical tests until you find a p-value um, that is significant so it's this hunting for significance you can remove that or reduce it because you have to write down everything you're gonna do and if you do a lot of tests you're gonna correct for this additionally it presents prevents harking and, and this is I think is a very similar thing harking means hypothesizing after the results are known so hypothesizing after the results are known and it can be interpreted as imaginary post hoc storytelling because what you do is you see your data like maybe you had a hypothesis what you what kind of patterns you would see but then when you look at your data you think oh this hypothesis would fit nicely to this data and then you change the story into a fairy tale because you say yeah we expected this hypothesis that you will already know to find and hence we didn't tell not this analysis and yes we found it so it prevents this hypothesizing after results are known it avoids this fairy tale storytelling according to me there are two things missing and what I what I think should be emphasized more which is not in the literature is what I like about pre-registering is that an experiment always moves forward so when you have written down your analysis and you start gathering the data you cannot go back and this goes hand in hand with this it forces supervisors to stop asking for one more analysis and also as a supervisor this will help you to stop doing this so people can finish on time um, and as a student it's very nice that have you when you have written down your analysis you're sure whatever comes out of it you'll have done your work and you can go on with your life instead of being stuck being held hostage by a supervisor asking one more analysis so those are reasons why you should pre-register pre -register also for exploratory studies 
uh, we know already from one of the papers it was about the effect on um, pre-registration between uh, for exploratory studies it compared exploratory studies that were pre-registered yes or no and what that paper found is that there was more transparent reporting based on criteria for example a hypothesis was confirmed and an a priori analysis plans that's what you would expect um, and also pre-registered studies pre-registered studies had fewer statistical significant results so only 84 percent had significant results i think that's still a lot but in this case it's apparently uh, it's what they found non pre registered samples had more so that means we have 25 percent more significant findings in the non pre registered samples 25 so percent more where is that 25 percent coming from is a question and you could argue that they probably have been hunting for p-values so the second literature search I done, done is is I want to is is so if they are done there are good reasons to do a registered reports on exploratory studies how do they look like do they exist uh, which fields are they in how was the analysis specified like how if you do it how do you do it and was the design of the study changed in the process because a lot of people are worried about doing that uh, when you do that that you don't get away with so I wanted to answer that question too so what I discovered is that finding registered reports is hard and please let me know if you find something better what I found is a manually curated list of 351 registered reports at this URL you could not export that that, that list easily uh, so I had to write an R script to make it into uh, a comma separate file which is uh, here you can download it from the report story where I have this presentation so I found four studies um, that had the word exploring or explore in it here exploring 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 and exploring uh, this I removed this study was uh, closed access this study however I removed because it doesn't have a pre-registration because I want to see how do people write pre-registrations how do how are they able to describe their analysis before having seen the data well I'll show you now so well first in which field so these are like the like the more the classical science fields like biology I would say or psychology uh, cognition so this is what I found the economics paper didn't have a pre-registration so that's why I, I, it's between brackets and now I want to go into details how they specify the analysis and I picked out uh, some that I think are insightful to see how precise they can be so for example I've seen a lot of reporting of measurements we will report something raw data will be uploaded so you can they disclose uh, all their what they're gonna disclose they're gonna they write down hey this you'll you you'll get this they report their tools uh, uh, which software which programming language they also um, report how to do an analysis workflow for example they follow the method of some some other stu study and I think this is interesting here they say we will use a test to do something and if there is a problem then we're gonna add a correction so that's a way like because you can imagine when you do an analysis that that one of your statistical assumptions is false or your data doesn't follow a distribution if you just write down what you're gonna do it's fine um, one of the three studies reported um, st st their level of statistical significance um, properly like explicitly of course they weren't all tests they were there um, whereas a Bayesian paper so one and two out of three use classical statistic one out of three used Bayesian 
um, they specify the prior, so the assumptions they know beforehand. Um, the statistical tests that were reported were quite, uh, were always simple, as in the, these like basic statistical tests, um, but they are very specific. We will use a blah blah blah. We will conduct a t-test, chi-square, square test. Also, the assumptions of the experiment itself was tested. For example, here, we will also compare the proportion of choices of, of some tasks to determine if the presence of blah 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 indeed affects the relative choice preference of the control. So they here they test if the control is actually uh, working, if the control is actually controlling. Also here they assume at least a medium effect size, and that they they assume this on um, uh, what they they, they they had written down that they would assume this. Um, it's it's expected. It's part of the experiment. So they 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 double check if their experiment makes sense, and they go even worse. Um, uh, this is the same paper. If no significant difference between a control uh, with the control exists and the data, the results of the study cannot be interpreted regarding the present research question. So here they even say when an experiment is invalid. And here uh, is the same paper, they also reported the, the effect size to see if it was big enough and, and these go hand in hand. Uh, this, this, this paper double checks uh, the experiment st quite strongly. Also, this what I liked about is that they, you can write down which data to exclude. So here they re removed individuals who scored two and a half standard deviations above or below the mean for respond for some some things they needed to do if they do not follow task instructions if they do not complete all four sessions um, then they're simply removed and you can write that down what they also saw is um, is that there were always some partial replication going on and i think uh, that is very nice that they that because it's very hard to get replication research funding because it's not novel. Um, on the other hand, it is very insightful and they just snuck it in. Here, as a partial replication of previous research, we will blah blah blah. blah. Um, here they do some kind of uh, a Bayesian paired sample t test, um, which they confirm, which should be consistent with previous studies. And also, based on previous study, we predict some effect. Um, and then maybe they will disprove these earlier studies in, in all two cases here. Uh, I have there, there was even a sneer to 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 early to be that that, that the author was a bit um, distrusting with earlier published research. And here is what I also like is how you draw conclusions. If we observe a no result, the paradigm fails to work. Or there's an alternative explanation, and a high process will be obsolete. And a no result of something indicates that either the paradigm does not exist, or that the experimental paradigm doesn't work in the expected way. So it's very nice to see if that I conclude that. So the next question is. Was the experimental design changed? So here they, they, they write this down quite specifically, um, and it was quite specific how they wrote things down in the pre registrations. Uh, two out of three, however, changed the study design. And uh, I'm not going to read through it. In this case, the, the, the editor was contacted if it would be okay to add one experiment, and then the, the author writes down why uh, he or she does it. And here we have also a change in experimental setup um, that was openly written down in the registered report, um, which was like a technical error. So, so, so there, this was electrodes. Um, this value was simply wrong or didn't work. So they they changed this and they changed it openly. So one in three studies didn't change their experimental design.
So you could argue that all these studies are are quite uh, quantitative, quite classical fields, um, and that they probably already had a clear idea what to research, and not this this true exploratory research. You could argue that. And then I think that th that this this suggestion I found this in in one of the papers. Is here they suggest to do pre-registration without with logging. Um, so the idea is that you write down, all right, and then we tried this test, and then you write down the test, and you upload it or you publish it or somewhere easy, not without a, with a review, but you publish it on GitHub, for example. Then you do the test, publish it. Then we found this and this, publish it. Then we decided to do this test, publish it, and then actually do the test, publish it. And in that case, you do get a proper historical timeline, um, and you can see if you did multiple testing and those kind of things, and it's then the true story. And I think this is an approach I really like. Um, like if you don't want to get too formal already, having a log of your changes is very useful. And I'm quite experienced with this. It doesn't take much more time at all. Uh, for me, making a change is let's see, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. Of course, I'm already working in this. There, git add build, git commit, make a change, git push. So making a change in what I have been working on. This took me 10 seconds, and I can do this very easily. Now I can even do it quicker, uh, like doing git and git push. So now I can make changes in one second. So logging your things, if you use a program, a tool like Git and Git combined with GitHub, you can easily sub upload your work in a second of time. You do need to understand Git and GitHub. That explains some that costs some training. I understand that, but I think this is a good form to do registration, do the right thing, to expose yourself, to prevent yourself from p-value hacking or to exp being exposed from p-value hacking. This is a good good idea. The conclusions of my talks are that well, first one conclusion is already with the method. So I was unable to search specifically for registered reports. Uh, for example, Google Scholar doesn't do this. I was unable to search specifically for exploratory research. So I needed to use search terms that were in the title. Um, and I don't think registered reports always have the word registered report in their title. I don't think all exploratory research has the word exploratory in it. If a paper has exploratory in the title, it doesn't always use exploratory research, it can be just a first analysis on something in a new context. But what I did learn is what the re literature sa says, why you should publish the analysis of exploratory research before having seen the data. And the most important reason was to distinguish between when your analysis is confirmatory and when it's exploratory. It makes your exploratory research better, it allows you to determine when to stop, and it reduces questionable research practices. So that's why people do it. Have people done it? Yes. I found four out of 351 registered reports with the word exploratory in it. Three of those have had a pre-registration uh, the fields were like the qualitative quantitative science fields, like uh, biology, psychology, uh, psychology. And the analysis was specified in, in quite some detail, and the styles were, were quite different, so you can express yourself there too. It's not that it's a stock standard way to write things down. If you dare, if you're more courageous, you can definitely write down when your experiment is invalid. Changing your study design, it happened two out of three cases, and it was just fine. They still got accepted um, because they openly disclosed it. 
So I would say that there is a lack of diversity in fields that do a registered report. There are no qualitative studies found, but there are recommendations how to do a registered report for qualitative studies. And a rolling report seems quite a low-key way to, to pre-register your report and help yourself always move forward in doing the right thing. So for the discussion I'll show you a statement of mine, uh, which is this one. So this is my statement. Any study should be pre-registered when possible, and doing so is always worth it. Also exploratory studies, even qualitative studies. But please, try to change my mind, because I have seen no good reason until now why I would be wrong. The discussion of this talk, what I do think is that you can say that I used a too quick and dirty approach or a quick and too dirty approach. Um, I just looked at titles, I didn't do a thorough literature search. Um, due to that I found too few registered reports and also the selection for papers was too sloppy because I only used titles like not all um, papers with the title word explore in the title are ne not necessarily ne exploratory papers at all. So if you have questions, but this is a YouTube video, but you can find the presentation here too. And uh, these are the references that I have used. So I wish you a very good day. And I'm gonna close this YouTube video. Uh, bye.